WSLS, this is 10 News, Virginia Today at 6, working for you. New restrictions in an effort to curb the spread of COVID. The situation around the country is really serious, and that's true here in Virginia as well. Why the governor says now is the time for more rules and why some Virginians are not happy. A major step forward to getting Americans a COVID-19 vaccine. We have found this information to be adequate to support uh, emergency use authorization of, of the vaccine. How long until you can get the shot? Restaurants forced to adapt to both new restrictions and colder temperatures. We have to do everything we can to enhance the guest experience. What local owners are pleading for so their businesses aren't left out in the cold. Good morning, finally. Happy Friday to you. We thank you for waking up with us this morning. Ah, the weekend. Mm. You can taste it now. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> Chris, Thank goodness. Uh, not seeing any snow anytime soon, at least. Yeah, no, at least through the weekend, things looking good for us. It is uh, pretty chilly out there, as you would expect, as we start you out with a live look at our Roanoke Blacksburg Airport Skycam. Currently, the Star City at 35 degrees, Whitfield at 33, Martinsville at 30 degrees. So some of us may be waking up to a little bit of frost on the windshield. Smith Mountain Lake and Lynchburg, though, looking good at 40 degrees. Our next system is still quite a ways out there. You see the snow in parts of Nebraska and parts of Iowa, but mostly rain on the warm side of it. And we should be on that relatively warm side of it as we get closer to tomorrow. For the Roanoke Valley, though, sunshine today. Temperatures 50s by lunch. Time. How about some upper 50s and lower 60s? That's what we're looking at as we head into the afternoon. I'll use two words to summarize. It's called common sense. That's what Governor Ralph Northam had to say when asked why he put new rules in place yesterday. It's another round of COVID restrictions for the Commonwealth as cases continue rising. Here's the breakdown. A modified stay-at-home mandate goes into effect Monday at 12.01 a.m. It encourages everyone to stay home from midnight to 5 a.m. Masks will be required in all indoor settings and outside if you're not six feet apart. Gatherings are now limited from 25 to just 10 people. Sporting events limited to 25 spectators inside and two guests per player outside. Many Virginians have mixed reactions. You know, I had it um, back in October and it really took a toll on me, so people just need to take it more serious. I've been in healthcare for 30 years and, and the masks I think are extremely, uh, they've gone overboard with the mask. We're hearing from Republican lawmakers about the governor's order. State Senator Steve Newman, who represents the 23rd district, covering from Lynchburg to Craig County, says the new curfew from midnight to 5 a.m. limits people's rights. Newman's also concerned about the continued restrictions small businesses face. Actually bringing in a curfew is an item that is a tool of martial law, and it really takes Virginia to a whole new step. So overall, uh, I think the governor has overstepped. The governor says he will continue to enforce rules against businesses as well. So far, the state cited 181 for not following the rules. Breaking overnight, COVID-19 vaccine prep kits are now being delivered across the U.S. Yesterday, an advisory committee to the Food and Drug Administration approved an emergency use authorization from a Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine. Here, you see boxes being delivered to Norton Healthcare in Louisville, Kentucky. Those boxes contain items such as syringes, masks and visors, sanitizer, a diluting agent for administering the vaccine and vaccination record cards. First, the vaccine is going to hospitals and pharmacies nationwide that partnered with the federal government. Next, healthcare workers and residents in long term care facilities are at the top of the list to get the vaccine. For younger, relatively healthy, non essential workers, Dr. Anthony Fauci says it should be around end of March or early April. But the goal is to make it as simple as getting the seasonal flu shot. Come in at their scheduled time, they'll meet with the pharmacist or technician. They'll get their flu shot. They'll get a record card with the vaccination that they that they got. Um, we'll also email them that record. Walmart is the latest retail giant to announce they'll give COVID vaccinations in stores across the country. Earlier this week, Kroger says it's ready and anxious to distribute the vaccine at its pharmacies. 
Giles County Schools are back to virtual learning again to stop the spread. School Board Chair Stevie Steele says the concern is not safety inside the school, but what students, teachers and parents do once the bell rings. He worries Thanksgiving will lead to an increase in cases and says it's too risky to have kids in close contact right now. Respect the process. Give us a chance to do our job. And if you think that we're getting off center and we're not doing what we're supposed to do, give us a call. Giles County Schools will remain in remote learning until January 6th. Lynchburg restaurant owners are finding ways to cope with COVID restrictions during the winter months. Some are adjusting their outdoor dining to include heaters and even blankets so customers can stay warm. One owner says he spent $10,000 to build this patio with tables and a fire pit near the world famous Stadium Inn. It forced him to give up essential parking next to his restaurant. I didn't want to lose the parking, but I gained some outdoor seating. And of course, today is beautiful, but we've seen a, a big drop with the weather. He also tells us he's seeing a big drop in his pocket. The restaurants lost about $150,000 this year. 2020 has been a real challenge to many of us, especially for those on the front lines. It's very taxing on them physically and mentally. And while they spend their days worrying about the safety of patients, they also have to continue to worry about the safety of their families once they're off the clock. We're both mentally and physically drained, um, but we're here for you all. Gowns. Uh, goggles to keep your eyes safe, the N95 mask, and the respirator. Despite the hardships that come with working on the front line, she says it's her duty and encourages people to still reach out to them for help. Senator Tim Kaine says he's willing to give up his winter break to pass more aid and hopes other senators do the same. Kaine believes lawmakers should stay on Capitol Hill to pass more COVID relief by the new year. He says there is a bipartisan bill worth more than $900 billion on the table, which would extend unemployment benefits that end December 26th. He believes this bill is equally as important as the aid passed by Congress in the spring. The scale of the of the human cost and the scale of the economic devastation has been horrible. And what we're trying to do is we've provided already trillions of dollars of assistance to businesses and to families and to hospitals, but we have to do more. Senator Kane says he's confident Congress is close to passing additional relief soon. As John Lawrence reports this morning, lawmakers are facing two major deadlines. Unless Senate leaders fix last minute differences, the U.S. government shuts down at midnight. We have to have a bill and we cannot go home without it. Republican Senator Rand Paul wants colleagues to first agree to delay consideration of the National Defense Authorization Act over an amendment he says limits a president from withdrawing troops from war zones. The neocon advocates for unlimited presidential war powers should own up to their hypocrisy and admit that their love of perpetual war trumps their off-stated unitary executive theory. This, as independent Senator Bernie Sanders is demanding a vote on a provision that gives Americans $1,200 stimulus checks. The American people want their government to respond to the terrible crises that they are facing today, and you just can't walk away from that. As the government shutdown deadline looms, COVID-19 stimulus package talks are stuck. People are in lines begging for food, uh, you know, looking for food for each meal for their children. And the renters are absolutely terrified that they're going to be evicted. We need to pass COVID relief before the end of the year. And I hope members of the Democrat leadership will decide that they're willing to move forward to meet our country's most critical COVID priorities. I'm John Lawrence reporting. 609 in what's news today, Averett University celebrates its graduates. It will live stream the fall commencement ceremony later today. Tomorrow, graduates can walk the stage to get their diplomas. Temporary lane closures could impact your commute in Lynchburg. Traffic on Candler's Mountain Road and the bridge near Red Lobster will be down to one lane from 830 to 3 as crews inspect it. Enjoy the Southwest Virginia Ballet's presentation of the Nutcracker. Normally, this is performed at the Berglund Center before a live audience, but due to the pandemic, that's not happening this year. You can watch a performance tonight at 7 on Blue Ridge PBS.
Campbell County Public Library holds a drive through Santa event. Drive through the Timbrook Library from 630 to 830. Head to Uptown Christiansburg, formerly the New River Valley Mall, for the Town of Christiansburg's Reverse Christmas Parade. The flows will remain parked as you drive through. The theme for this year's event is Light Up the Tree, It's Christmas You See. The parade's from 7 to 9. Enjoy Christmas lights and interact with Santa and Miss Claus starting tonight. Blue Ridge PBS is holding Santa's Winter Wonderland. The drive through display on McNeil Drive will be open nightly from 6 p.m. to 9.30, except on Friday and Saturday nights, Santa and Mrs. Claus will be there. Mm, that looks great. 610, it's almost time to be freezing for a reason. How you can get involved during this year's polar plunge for the Special Olympics. Then new at 639, not just making the best of it. For these performers, 2020 is the year to shine. This is their moment. They're coming with their hair curled and their makeup on, just as any Clara who would do it on stage would. And in your Feel Good Friday, how one local dance company is making dreams come true. Plus, battling persistent opioid use, we're working for you on alternatives to opioids for new moms.